Well, bonjour, no, which is Italian for hello, chic, which is French for cheek. <laughs> so, how are you? Had a good week? Lovely. Well, back to me. <laughs> now, previously in my life, I tell my mother I'd be happy not to marry, which I think she was fine with. <laughs> We calmed her down, but she regularly attempts to set me up with aristocratic squires at her literary-themed parties. <laughs> no, they're worse than they sound. <laughs> last year, last of the Mohicans. Darling, this is Quentin. Hello, Miranda. Um, the last time we met was at a tennis tournament in uh, Tunbridge. Thomas Lather. I fear another party's looming, so I'm stressed. You know when you're stressed when the little things get to you. Morning. Morning. Oh no, Stevie, what's what's this? What are you doing? What have you done? It's not even 10 a.m. and I can already talk to Miss Heather Small. What have you done today to make the food? I'll tell you, Heather, I've done a marketing display. Right, I've... can I have a word? Oh, would you like my counsel? I would, sir. Go ahead, please, caller. I'm not invited to this meeting, Heather. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. I shall explain this as clearly and professionally as I can. Valentine's Day makes me go... <laughs> What a lovely relationship that we're showing off about, have we? Oh, I'm so in love. Oh, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. I don't know who St. Valentine was, but I hope he died alone, surrounded by couples. <laughs> right, this is going. What? Yes. Before it reminds Mum I'm still single and a themed party definitely rears its ugly head. Well, can't you get out of them? I'm notoriously bad at excuses, Stevie. You know that. Particularly with Mum. She'll just use her beloved phrase, such fun, to shut me up. What's your standard excuse for getting out of things? I just panic and say, I can't, I'm going to the cinema. Well, that's not an excuse. What if someone asks you to the cinema and you don't want to go? I go to the cinema with them. <laughs> well, I mean, I can't say I can't go to the cinema because I'm going to the cinema, can I? Are you an actual idiot? Sorry? <laughs> what do you use? Oh, well, I say uh, my niece is ill and I have to help. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> I know. I am particularly clever. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, if your mum does set you up, just look at it as good dating practice. Might help with Gary. Gary and I are just friends. Really, it's easier. And anyway, I don't need help with dating. I've been on loads of dates. I've literally been on one. <laughs> so, you know, don't doubt me, Stevie. I am a smooth operator. <laughs> Sake. Darling, it was absolutely mortifying at the wedding on Saturday. The bride didn't throw her bouquet, just passed it to Miranda, <laughs> while someone shouted, as if. <laughs> but I am determined to find you someone, and so, drum roll please, I am hosting a Pride and Prejudice themed party. 
Next Friday, the only day Edmund de Tory can do. <laughs> Wait, Mum, Mum, did you say Friday? Yes. Oh, I, I, I definitely can't make Friday. Why not? Well, it's my daughter's first birthday. <laughs> You don't have a daughter. I have a daughter. Uh, I am voting in the House of Commons. You're not an MP. I'm not an MP. Uh, I'm washing my shoes. I tell you what it is. I am baking a hedgehog for Tony Benn's anniversary. I just, I can't. I get in a panic. It's a condition. I'm sweating. Oh, hello, Mum. Listen. I don't want a pro- such fun. No, I don't. Take such fun, Mum. Don't such fun. Because such, such, such fun is such fun. Such fun. Such fun. Such fun. Such fun. I told you it's so effective and so annoying. Why can't you hear? I don't want to get married. Thank you. I mean, everyone else knows I hate the idea of intimacy. I hate the idea of somebody knowing everything about me. I mean, I don't want somebody knowing that I'm not even 40 and already I have a pair of shoes specifically for driving. (laughs) Do you really? No. (laughs) I mean, you know, maybe Edmund isn't that bad. I'll look him up. How are you spelling de Tory? Tory, as in T O R Y, has friends called Hugo and Biffy <laughs> and pretends to like hoodies. <laughs> Ooh, satire. Stylish. <laughs> It's definitely too early for a mojito. Miranda, it's half past ten in the morning. Of course not, come on. No, 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 slippery slope. Miranda, why don't you ask your mum to have the party here? I mean, at least then Clive and I can keep an eye on you. And to be honest, I could do with the business. I can't believe how much takings have gone down since you went on a diet. Oh, ha, ha. not joking. <laughs> no, Gary, look, it can't go ahead. Please? Pretty please? Oh, fine, I wouldn't have got out of it anyway. Oh, thank you. And, you know, maybe this uh, Edward guy's not that bad. No, 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 sorry, not Edward. Edmund. Edward, normal person. Edmund, weird person. <laughs> Mund. <laughs> Right. Well, maybe this Mund isn't that bad after all. Maybe. Although he'll definitely be a man that does sports manoeuvres. You know, sports mimes. Men that can't help themselves suddenly find themselves practising a sport move. Will it go on? (sighs) That, for me, is the main difference between men and women. Men feel the need to announce their manlyhood by a quick, ah, sport move. (laughs) Women don't do that, do they? Don't suddenly find women going, hoovering, Mr. Bit. <laughs> Take your shoes off, dear, and the breeze. <laughs> well, hopefully, being set up will give you some much-needed practice in the dating department. Why do people keep saying this? I'm fine with the dating. All right. Uh, pretend you're in a club and approach Gary. OK. Right. There's music. I'm feeling it. (laughs) It's a bit camp, but we'll go with it. (laughs) Hi. Hi. How are you? (laughs) Miranda, problem. I found Edmund Tory online. Photo. Which way up that photo's meant to be? Face down, surely. <laughs> High vibe. <laughs> Not good enough for the file. <laughs> Recent profile update. Any fillies want to ride, I don't mean a horse. Brackets. <laughs> Imagine what I'll turn into.
idea if I end up with him. It's not funny. I mean, bare minimum, living on a country estate with a black Labrador called Jasper, pronounced Jasper. <laughs> Jasper, Jasper, come here. Jasper, feel. Jasper, put that down. Will you put that down? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I think it thinks your toddler is a pheasant. <laughs> come on, Jasper. Walk it. Right, party's off. What? No, come on, Miranda, I need the business. Tough. Come on, Steve, you need to think of an excuse. Emergency walk? Emergency walk. Long way up, short way down, go! <laughs> OK, task excuse. Let's workshop this. Um, a family member is dying. Not really going to work on my family. You're working? It's got to be something she believes. Uh, you're doing a gym class. Something she believes. You've joined Weight Watchers. Something she believes. You've got a date. It's got to be something she believes. Hi, I'm looking for something for my niece's party. Right, not now, customers. Sorry, we're on me. Um, oh, actually, hang on. So, if you had to think of an excuse to get out of a party, what would you say? Oh, uh, I usually say, and I know it's awful, um, sorry, but my mother's ill. Well, how's that going to work? I can't tell my mother my mother's ill. Have you thought this through at all? <laughs> to be fair, I didn't know the circumstances. Well, it's hopeless. Can you leave, please? Hey, you can't just ask a customer to leave. I can if he's annoying me. No, I'm happy to go. He's happy to go. No, stay here. No, no, I'd rather go. You'd rather go? Yeah, only because you bullied him. Stand brown. No, I don't want to. Stand brown! Yeah, please, please, don't, don't hurt me. Come on, let's... <laughs> Task excuse, yeah. Let's do the thinking rubber bands. Good idea. Actually, you can pitch in. That would be very helpful. We don't do the thinking caps here. We do the thinking rubber bands, OK? So um, sit down. That's right. it. OK. Now, you pop it on your head and you see what springs to mind. OK? You ready? And Go. Oh. Anything? No. No. Oh. 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 Nothing. <laughs> nothing. And you definitely got nothing. No, but then to be fair, I don't understand the world I've just walked into. <laughs> I'm not going to get out of it. Hey, relax. Then, you know, stress is not good for the body. But why don't you go for a nice massage? No, the last time we got stuck in the head hole, it wasn't relaxing. <laughs> yoga. Don't say yoga, I'm not allowed back. And breathe in. And let it all out. Oh, well, it's my mum. You see, she's never listened to my needs and it really winds me up. Doesn't she realise I'm 34 and I've got my own life to leave? <laughs> Oh, Tilly, that's all I need. Miranda Poppet, I know you hate being set up, but... No, no Tilly. Shh, I have found you someone tremendulant. <laughs> He's an ex-army doctor. Dreamboat Charlie. You would not be punching below your weight. He's a total nudulator. I Very sexy. Sexy. He's literally just come back from La Grande Pomme where he's entre nous made a shed of Johnny Cashington's. Oh, come on, that was just basic. <laughs> he's made a lot of money in New York. Right. Ah. Oh, sorry. Bear with? Mm -hmm. Bear with? Yeah. Bear with? Bear with? <laughs> Bear with? Mm -hmm. Back. Yes, and... <laughs> He's seen a photo, and he's still interested. There's a photo! <laughs> Miranda, why don't you go on a date with him? Then Penny might cancel the party. No, I'm sorry. No, I hate being set up. I can't. So. Oh, that is a major pity. And his friend, Colonel Shane. <laughs> you know where I am, if you change your mind. Yeah. Ciao, Bella. Emberg. <laughs> oh, do you know what part of not 
not wanting to be set up do people not understand? Oh, here we go. I mean, I hate to be anywhere that might involve flirting, which, let me tell you, at six foot one is not easy. No one's ever taller than me. I spend my time lowering the height with the forward knee bend. How do you do, sir? <laughs> Trouble is, your arms are suddenly disproportionately long, which is weird. And moving off becomes tricky. They'll ask me for a drink. I have to follow them to the bar like this. <laughs> what can I do? I mean, imagine that! Hey, calm down! Have you ever thought about listening to whale music? A whale music? A what a load of bollocks! <laughs> oh, that's nice! Okay, yes, I get in a dating state, but that's just boarding school for you. Starved of male company for years, still now when a bloke says hi, I think, nice spring wedding! <laughs> I mean, essentially, I'm not that fussy when it comes to men. My mother's choices aside, I have three rules. Firstly, they're straight. Secondly, they're aged between 18 and 65. <laughs> Thirdly, quite particular this one, can't abide a high-pitched voice. You know, it's the David Beckham complex. They look great, say something, and the magic's gone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Miranda. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, what brings you in? Hello, it's the new Nokia. An emergency at home, you say? <laughs> this is all Mum's fault. A Pride and Prejudice party. And if I hear such fun one more time... I tried to stop her. No, she wanted a what I call party update. So, the Mr. Darcy lookalike is happy to arrive dry and we can moisten him ourselves. <laughs> the flowers... No, no, um, um, please stop. I, um, I definitely can't make Friday. Why not? Um, well, um, Stevie's little niece is seriously ill. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That's awful. I know, and I said I'd do a shift that night, so... Why can't Stevie look after her? She can't, can she? No, she, she can't. Why not? You'd have to ask her. That's you? Oh, yes. <laughs> so why can't she? She's... I'm, um... Going to the cinema? <laughs> Surely the child is more important. Well, the film is... It's very important. Very important. <laughs> what is it? It's, um... It's, um, um... It's Ice Age 3, Dawn of the Dinosaurs. <laughs> Not important enough. Not important Not enough. enough. It's, um... It's, it's Citizen Kane. Good. Citizen, Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Yeah. It is an important film, I grant you. Mm. But I should have thought your family would come first. Yes, Stevie, because really insensitive of you yeah. to ask me to look after your niece just because you want to go to the cinema. Oh, well, good. So we're all on. Oh, goody. <laughs> Wait, honey, it must be a massive effort to, to host a party just to set Miranda up, I and mean, particularly when she's already got a date with a doctor. Oh, no, darling, that's called an appointment. Bless. No, no, an army doctor. Really? Yeah, friend of Tilly's. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, what we saved from the party, we put towards the wedding. Good luck, darling. No, don't say such fun. Well, if it annoys you that much, no, I won't. Such fun. <laughs> such fun. Oh, a double. <laughs> what did you do that for? You know I don't want to go on a date. But it's a ticky town. <sighs> he might be nice. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. You look nice. Thank you, please, very much. Please, thank you very to you. <laughs> I'm meeting someone. 
Yes, I know. Your mum just called. She's cancelled the party. You do realise she was going to spend a shed load of money in here, but hey... Don't blame me. It was her idea. I'm just meeting the man of my dreams. And here I am. Listen to my genuine laughter. (laughs) So, uh, who is this man of your dreams, anyway? It's a friend of Tilly's. Oh, she said he'd be wearing a red carnation. So well, what, what, a friend of Tilly's? Yes, OK, he might be awful. Can we have a signal just in case I need help? How about... <laughs> Clive, it's got to be something subtle. I can slip into a social situation. How can I make this seem natural on a date? All right, cut me a bit, myself. Why don't you ask me for more sauce? Yeah, and then I can say the kitchen's on fire, everybody out. Perfect. I mean, I'm sure I won't need it. She said he was lovely. It's the name of a floating brothel. (laughs) To cut a bloody funny story short, I went in with a few needs. Oh, oh, could it be shorter? (laughs) There was this girl, we were in a cubicle. Really short, like you. The boat sank. There we go. (laughs) You know, I was sceptical, but blimey, Tilly got this right, what? Because she knows I fancy women, I wouldn't necessarily beat in a fight. <laughs> oh, where's the little fella gone? Um, what can I get you? Booze! That should do it, eh? Whatever you recommend. Okay. Booze! I bloody love crisps, don't you? Here's some wine. Uh, Thank you, Clive. Mm -hmm. Clive, I was wondering if I could have some more sauce. (laughs) You haven't ordered yet. (laughs) Clive, I just have a feeling I might need some more sauce. I just have a feeling you might need some menus. Don't you often wonder if food could talk what it would sound like? Hey, I'm an olive. It's oh. a bloody funny game. Gorgeous. <laughs> Clive, Clive. <laughs> Gary, Gary, how's the kitchen? It's not on fire, is it? <laughs> uh, no, no, the kitchen's fine. Why? No reason, you bastard. No reason at all. Listen, I know we've not even eaten yet, but I'm feeling chemistry. Would you be on for coming back to mine for a bit of pumping a rumping? have spilt my drink. Excuse me for one second, please. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, but come here. Come. Morning. Oh, dear. Pajamas in the workplace. It was really bad. I'm still in shock. 
And Tilly's already told Mum I'm not interested in Charlie, so the party's back on and she's setting me up again. You do know you might have to go, don't you? I know. I mean, the only way of not being set up is if you were already engaged. And, well, I mean this in the nicest, most well-meaning way possible, but that's not going to happen in 24 years, is it? Let alone 24 hours. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Hi. Oh, hi. When I'm naked in bed and I roll over, my breasts clap. Hi. I never got anything from my niece's party. Do you really think this is a good time? Look, there never seems to be a good time. Oh, can you ask Miranda for her hand in marriage? What? Well, if you pretend to be together, problem solved. Oh, that's good. Hi. Well, I'm naked in bed and I roll over my breasts. No, 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 not helping. I only came in for some indoor fireworks. Look, I know it's weird, customer, and I'm calling you that because I think it would be odder if I found out your real name now. But if you don't pretend to marry me, I might become Miranda de Tory. This is my husband, Edmund, OK? Imagine. This is what you'd wake up to every morning. Again, not helping. Very rude. Who wouldn't want some of this, eh? This of a morning. Do you like it? Little sheep. <laughs> I can't. For a start, I'm already married. Oh, we'll just end it. Is that too much to ask? It's to a man, I'm gay. Oh, really? Oh, right, you don't believe me. Oh, well, Mum would. She thinks anyone still single on the verge of 40 is a lesbian. Oh, hello. Hello. That's good. That's very good. You know, if you come out, there's a chance your mother will never talk to you again. <gasps> this plan has no downside. <laughs> I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Gotta let it show. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. Just us. Always just us. Oh, Mum. Listen, I've got something to tell you. Um, put, your, put your pen down. You don't need to arrange the party or set me up because, well, I'm glad you're sitting down because the thing is, I'm gay. I knew it. You owe me 50 quid. <laughs> oh, darling. I am what I call thrilled. This is fantastic news. What? I always had my suspicions and kept hoping. You bat for the other side, and all this time I didn't think you batted for anyone. But you knew your wicket was being thoroughly knocked by a bowler with no balls. <laughs> And I understand the lure. We've all been the way of the lily. What? Belinda and I had a fun time at school. Oh, no! <laughs> sorry, uh, Gary. Sorry, party's off. What? Miranda's a lesbian. Uh, well, why don't we make it a coming out party? Ooh! <laughs> That's a splendid idea. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't think she'd say yes. Just because you want the business. You are something that I am too nice to say. Oh, party's on. Party's off. It's almost like I'm in some kind of farce. <laughs> Listen, Mum, I'm not ready for a coming out party. Uh, darling, simply. it's 2009. Deal with it. I've already got the dress theme. Simply famous lesbians throughout history. <laughs> That's a room full of people dressed as either K.D. Lang or Sandy Toxvig. Oh, no, I tell you what, we've got the Pride and Prejudice outfits. Let's do Tipping the Velvet. This is going really badly. <laughs> uh, we'll have to find you a suitable partner. Don't set me up. Is there someone? Yes. <laughs> um, Stevie. Oh, 
Your father and I had hoped for something rather better than that. But on the plus side, he owes me 50 quid. <laughs> oh, I just had a thought. Um, Gary, I'll come back later to discuss everything. Darling, before they close, I seem to remember the National Trust do life membership discounts for lesbians. <laughs> I hate you, and I hate you. I thought you were coming out. Why is this still a Pride and Prejudice party? It's not. Okay. Here's the thing. We're an item. Mum's hosting us a tipping the velvet theme coming out party. We've got life membership of the National Trust and we can book our civil partnership there at a 10% discount. But yeah, you've got me life membership to the National Trust. You're definitely focusing on the wrong bit. <laughs> Now, won't we? Come on, lesbian role play. Dearie, oh. <laughs> 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 can you stop acting the couples? It's going to get creepy and complicated. Sorry, are you ashamed of me? What? I think you'll find your family will be amazed and they mightily impress with me on your arm. Then look at me. I'm a hot fox, Stevie. You suddenly end up good enough for you. You do know you're not really a lesbian. <laughs> this is all your fault, you know that, don't you? I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm supposed to be at my niece's party. Everything all right, darling. Just going to check on the lesbian blancmange. <laughs> Deliberate. <laughs> so you've seen Edmund de Tory. Such a shame. I thought he was perfect. Th that's Edmund de Tory. Hmm? But he doesn't have a weird face. Oh, de Tory. D e double t o r i. Italian. Yes. <laughs> right. That's it. Everybody, have your attention, please. Thank you. Just a short announcement. I know this will come as a shock to some of you, particularly because this is a coming out party. But it turns out the thing is I'm straight. <laughs> Darling, you are a what I call nightmare, but I still love you. <laughs> Now, please allow me to do what I wanted to do in the first place, introduce you to Edmund. Go on, then. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, wow, Mr. Darcy. You look better than I've ever imagined in that. <laughs> Miranda? Better go. Yes, of course, to uh, meet the man of your dreams. <laughs> Edmund, this is Miranda. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much for coming, please. Thank you very so. And thank you for organising our promises to be a wonderful life. Um, sorry, have you got something stuck in your throat? A little quiche or something? No, I'm fine, thank you. This is your party.
Well, buongiorno, which is Italian for hello, chic, which is French for cheek. <laughs> so, how are you? Had a good week? Lovely. Well, back to me. <laughs> now, previously in my life, I tell my mother I'd be happy not to marry, which I think she was fine with. <laughs> We calmed her down, but she regularly attempts to set me up with aristocratic squires at her literary-themed parties. <laughs> no, they're worse than they sound. <laughs> last year, last of the Mohicans. Darling, this is Quentin. Hello, Miranda. Um, the last time we met was at a tennis tournament in uh, Tunbury. Thomas Alata. I fear another party's looming, so I'm stressed. You know when you're stressed when the little things get to you. Morning. Morning. 